Agudita 6.27 Prashantamanasam hiyainam yoginam sukhamuttamam upaiti shantrajasam brahmabhutam kalmasham Prashantamanasam hiyainam Krishna is speaking about the progressive perfection on the path of yoga. And he says that by consistent yoga practice, in the previous verse, two verses he has said, in 6.25 stated, Shanae, Shanae, gradually step by step, fix the mind in the self and don't let it go anywhere else. Don't let it go anywhere else. And what if it goes elsewhere? Krishna says, bring it back. Yato yato nishchalati manas chanchala masthiram tatastato niyam yaitat atmanya eva vasham nayet. Wherever and whenever the mind matters, bring it back under the control of the self. So by this uh, diligent practice uh, of first trying to keep the mind focused, not letting it wander, and if it wanders, bringing it back, by this what will happen? Prashantamanasam hiyenam. This verse sound, it sounds itself so soothing. Shant. The word Shanta has a, it's, it's, it's something like a onomotopoeia. Onomotopoeia is an English figure of speech in which it's, it's a figure of speech, not necessarily English. Wherein the sound of the word conveys the sense of the word. So Prashanta, the, it's like serenity, serenity, feel serene. Because the word itself makes us feel serene. It's like ragas are musical sounds which are meant to evoke certain emotions. So Prashanta Manasam Hyenam. Krishna says that the mind will become Prashanta. Right now our mind is Ashanta, constantly restless. Thinking of this, thinking of that. In the Chaitanya Charita Amrut, it is said that Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakale Ashanta. That as long as the mind is, is powered by desires other than the desire to serve Krishna, then those desires keep the mind restless. But when by the practice of yoga, as it is said over here, the mind is purified. Prashanta Manasam Hyenam. The mind becomes peaceful. Not just Shanta. But Prashant. So there is, Krishna has used the word Prashant earlier in the same chapter when he's talking about the disposition which Sadhaka needs to have. Prashant Atma Vigatabhir Brahmachari Vratesthitaha Manasanyam Yamachitto Yukta Sita Matparaha. So this is 6.14. Krishna said that. One should be peaceful, be fearless, be in Brahmachari and in this way try to fix the mind on me, making me the goal. So there it is more of a sadhana. The mind may be, mind may not be peaceful but one draws the mind away from agitating things and cultivates peacefulness. Whereas here Krishna has said that uh, peacefulness is not a, not a emotion that we cultivate uh, by conscious striving, but peacefulness becomes the default disposition of the mind. The mind itself becomes peaceful because the agitating forces from within the mind have been removed. Prashantamanasam yenam. And when the mind is peaceful like this, the yoginam sukham uttamam. The yogi experiences uttama sukha. The best happiness, the highest happiness. Yoginam sukham uttamam. Upaiti, yogi attains that happiness. Shanta rajasam. So the word shanta is repeated in this verse. Earlier it was prashantam, prashanta manasam hienam there. Shanta was part of prashanta. And here again shanta comes. Upaiti shanta rajasam. Rajasa refers to the mode of passion. So upaiti shanta rajasam. That means the mode of passion becomes pacified. So, it is the mode of passion which makes us want to be dominators, controllers, enjoyers of this world. When we come to goodness, Sattva, Sanjayate, Gyanam, Krishna speaks in 14.11, that Sattva Buna breeds knowledge. And with that knowledge comes detachment. Because we start seeing if we use knowledge, uh, the knowledge that is awakened through goodness, that Trying to control this world is futile. 
not just that in the sense that we won't be able to control for long but it's not fulfilling trying to make things happen according to our will it doesn't really make us happy even if we get the objects of our desire that doesn't bring satisfaction we want to control so that we can enjoy but the enjoyment itself doesn't bring enjoyment means what we we th- we do an activity thinking it is enjoyable but the result of it is not it turns out to be not as enjoyable as we expected it to be and then the person goodness uh, starts thinking it's not worth it there's no point to it mm. the person in passion thinks there is no point other than it there is no point other than sex say for example what is the point of life other than sex as aparaspara sambhutam kimanyat kama hai to kam krishna verbalizes the mentality of the demoniac in 16.8 when he says kimanyat kama hai to kam what other than kama sense gratification can is the goal of life now that is the sort of mentality is induced by rajoguna but when rajoguna is pacified upaiti shant rajasam when rajoguna is pacified then the yogi realizes that what is the point in uh, trying to run around and control things let me look in words let me seek in words instead of trying to control the outer world according to my re- uncontrolled inner desires let me control the inner desires which are uncontrolled and that will bring me happiness and actually that is the mode yogi starting motivation but now at this stage the yogi is pacified the mode of passion so there is no more passion has become pacified there is no no such passion to control the outer world and then brahma bhutam akalmasham brahma bhutam the yogi becomes situated on the brahman platform on the spiritual platform so the soul is by nature spiritual but when the soul is contaminated by material desires by impurities and the soul's consciousness gets dragged from the spiritual level down to the material level but when akalmasham when the kalmasha the contaminations the impurities are removed then the soul returns back to the spiritual level and when the soul returns back to the spiritual level thus then the soul experiences lasting happiness there so as it says it, yeah. yoginam sukham uttamam sukha sukha is happiness but what kind of sukha uttama tama can refer to specifically the mode of ignorance but it can also refer to the broad ignorance that characterizes material existence uttama means that which is the best happiness that which is beyond the darkness of material existence beyond the ignorance of material existence and that happiness yoginam sukham uttamam that happiness can be experienced by the study practice of yoga by which so this verse if we look at it sequentially what is the same by the kind of practice of yoga which has been described in the previous verse which centers on keeping the mind focused on spiritual truth so this is the back this is the back text the back story which leads to this verse then by that the mind will become peaceful the passion within it will become pacified so pashanta manasam hiye nam the the mind will become peaceful upaiti shant rajasam the passion will become pacified so because the passion is the uh, passion is the inner force that agitates the mind so the mind becomes peaceful because the inner motor that was agitating it that motor has become uh, has run out of fuel that has been stopped now and then brahma bhutam kalmasham one becomes free from contaminations which drag away drag us away from drag our consciousness away from the spiritual platform when there are no forces dragging us away from the spiritual platform then naturally we return to the spiritual platform uh, just as a magnet normally po- po- points out north south but when there are other magnetic forces uh, other uh, then the mind then the mag- magnet may get distracted from its north south orientation but when there is akalmasham when there are no impurities when those extraneous magnetic forces are removed in the ma- magnetic na- ma- actually points in the north south direction so like that when impurities are removed akalmasham then the soul naturally becomes situated on the spiritual platform brahma bhutam and brahma bhuta at the spiritual level the soul is by nature sachidananda and that's why 
the soul experiences happiness yoginam sukham uttamam and in this way the long journey of the soul of the yogi seeker which begins with shuchaudeshe pratishthapya that going to jungle and sitting in a secluded place secluded sacred place uh, for meditation that closes in on perfection closes in on the highest happiness so this talks about this verse talks about brahman realization and the second verse then the, the krishna in the next verse will talk about in the 28th verse he will talk about brahman realization further 29th he will talk about parmatma and 30th he will talk about bhagwan realization this is how by sustained yoga practice the yogi uh, closes in on spiritual perfection and relishes spiritual happiness thank you